I'm Jawan McClinton Smith. I was um, convicted of second degree murder of my husband. I spent 12 years and three months in prison. My sentence was overturned from life to 15 years in 2010. I married my husband in 2002. I was young, working, full time mom, never been in trouble, and I married into a very violent situation that I didn't know. I was already married, and when I became pregnant with my daughter, um, the domestic violence began, five months pregnant. I hid it from my family. I didn't hide it from his. And you, sh you ashamed. You want to keep everything private because you feel like you're failing. You know, your, your children, your marriage is failing. You don't want nobody to know about it. But his family knew about it. Um, put me in labor with our, do our daughter early. Um, I did report it to the hospital. But I had called the police numerous occasions to put him in jail because we was married. They never stopped him from coming home. I was too embarrassed to go back to my mom, my grandmother, my aunt. It just wasn't just embarrassing. And you think somehow it's your fault? I didn't know it wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. I hid everything and then it came to a head. Um, I fought back. I grabbed a butter knife. Prosecutor um, used it as a, a murder weapon. Never said it was a butter knife. Um, it never was. Um, he was found to have um, drugs and alcohol in his system. He was like eight times over the legal limit of what he should have had. Um, none of that helped me. They convicted me, gave me life. I didn't have a jury on my peers. The jury on my peers was retired detectives, put retired police officers, retired firemen. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a jury on my peers, mm -hmm. but because they didn't know. And the ones that did understand, they wasn't allowed to sit on my jury. Mm -hmm. um, I sat on bond for two years. I had a court appointed attorney. When I saw that it wasn't going anywhere, I got a paid attorney. By that time, it was too late. Um, we had a new district attorney coming in. First, uh, I had the first case of the year. He wanted a conviction. He got it. I got life. Um, I fired that attorney, came into another one leaving my kids to my uh, mom and my grandmother, which eventually passed once I was convicted and sentenced to life. My grandmother passed the next year my mom passed. Uh, my aunts got my kids. Uh, it was just horrendous. However, I'm still trying to fight for my life because I'm in prison with a life sentence. I've never been in trouble. This is all new to me. Don't know where to start. Don't know where I'm going to get the money from a new attorney. Everything was just overwhelming for me. I finally um, went back to court in 2010, and my post-conviction was granted, mm -hmm. and they overturned my life sentence, and they wanted me to go back to trial, and that way I could have got just negligent homicide or something. Mm -hmm. But by that ten, by that time, my kids was teenagers, and I wasn't gonna take them. Back. I was not gonna be selfish. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, okay God, you brought me this for what you got for me. I went in there and I pled guilty to manslaughter, which was a sentence from zero to 40. But the judge had had my case from the beginning, and he never felt like I was guilty. He sentenced me to 15 years with credit for time served. Wow. But at the time, there was a law that passed. Um, uh, was it Act 3? It was supposed to be violent crimes. Hell, yes. We uh, appealed it. We went to Second Circuit Court of Third Third Court of Appeals to to try to get that invoked. But they would not give it to us because when he sentenced me, he was under the impression that I would have immediate release. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that law never passed for us. Even though it was the way that it was worded, it was worded the, that it was for violent, first time violent crime offenders, but it wasn't. So I said another five years in prison. Mm -hmm. I met all these other women like me mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that never been in trouble, mm -hmm. that was a part of domestic violence or that was prostituting, trying to feed their kids. And they ended up having uh, sex crimes against them. Um, they couldn't go home, they had no place to go. Because with their crime, they couldn't stay 100 feet within the school zone. And their family probably stayed within that school zone and they couldn't go home. So they would be in prison seven and eight months trying to find somewhere to go because the prison system didn't know where to send them to, how to help them. Everybody was just without knowledge. And I was like, wow. Like, everything changed for, for me. When I went in innocent, I didn't come out that way. 
I worked in a library, law library. I couldn't even sleep from some things I read. But I also know how that every, some things are implicated that way, to look and sound this way, and it's not what it is. And I started with my case. It looked and sound like I'm a murderer because nobody knew that it was a butter knife. Nobody knew that. Had they knew that, had this evidence came out during trial, when it got a life sentence. But it did it. And I took a journey. And I do not regret that journey. Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't be the woman I am today. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know or who I know and meet the people that I meet today. So that's why I drive, drove all this way. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to know that violent crimes, people that commit those crimes sometimes look like me. Yeah. Sometimes they came from where I came from. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a horrible place that I came from. It just was a horrible experience. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people with crimes against nature. If you have sex in the park and the police get you, that's crimes, and crimes mm -hmm. against nature. Right. Mm -hmm. right. A lot of people never do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but no people don't know that. Yeah. And it took me to be there with my sisters and learn it. Yeah. And it changed my life. And of course, it's changed a lot of our lives because we are the main ones fighting for justice. Mm -hmm. 